How are you all doing today? Good. How about you? Oh, I'm great. Fantastic. Better now that I'm seeing all these wonderful faces. Are you uh, related to Miss uh, Miss Gio's girlfriend, Miss uh, Melissa? I don't want to butcher the last name. Oh, I always say yeah. Nguyen, but it's like Nijin, Nugin. Yeah, it's uh, it's Nguyen. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we're not related. Um, that name is just like uh, Smith or Johnson when we're Vietnamese. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just was, you know, the, the way you just pronounced it, like, but I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. I'm not sure. Melissa, like, says it's one way. Gia says it's another way. I just heard it that way from someone else as well. So, huh. but all right. So, we'll, uh, we'll get right into everything. Um, what we're going to be going over today is getting getting the clients on Zoom and, and getting control on Zoom, different ways we can establish control over Zoom. Rapport, not to brag, but I'd like to think I'm pretty good at rapport by now, not just because I've been Poor Lindsay.
Hey, Lindsay. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, glad that I can finally make it. I don't know if you heard what happened. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I just heard that something was going on with your car. Oh, I just went to Jiffy Lube to get an oil change, and I've been there for the last hour and a half. They told me it was only going to take 20 minutes, and so... <laughs> I fully expected to be here on time, so my apologies. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so today is just gonna be um because we talked about this with Vince. Is the next person, the next manager that you're gonna learn a couple things about what we do okay. here, and we told he couldn't make it to do in uh, in person. So he said, if you have any questions, I'm gonna give you his number um, for any questions that you may have for this video, but. You can always um, get in touch with him or your MGA, okay? You said his name is Vince? Yeah, his name is Vince Mazzari. Okay. I'll send you here. Um, I'll give you his number. Just let me know when you're ready. Sure. Give me a second. Sure. I always keep like post-its next to me at all times. It's really handy. Yeah, yeah. Same here, I always have those post-its everywhere. Right, Even though sometimes yeah. I lose them, I'm just like, oh, oh crazy. Um, so yeah, the number is 412-310-6492. Perfect, got it. All right. Awesome. So just take some notes. If you got any questions, just write them down and just give him a text. He'll be expecting it as well. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank right. you. No problem. Let me know if you can hear it. Okay. Okay. For a little bit, but that was kind of like the only thing that was like <laughs> yeah, it's keeping good. me grounded when, when right. I didn't have the skill set was just the ability to be talkative and relate to people, you know, smile, make them comfortable make them by you. So we'll go over some report tips and the report questions. Maybe if we have time, I can fit in some role playing on how I report. I build rapport with someone who's quiet and trying to be all tough and you know doesn't want to talk at all, which is just the worst thing ever. Um, but we can get around that. You gotta, you gotta be able to crack the puppies. You can, you can crack them. And if you can't crack them at the beginning, you can crack them throughout the whole entire presentation. Um, then we have the last thing we'll touch base on is the introduction, kind of going over the ratings, who we are, and uh, what we're going to do today. Now, how many of us in here, I know pretty much, how many of us in here are on Geo Backer's MGA deal, or I know you guys are on my MGA deal in the, in the house here, uh, Talia, you're on mine. What do you, you guys are on Geo's as well? Okay, you three, all right, great, and then so Ben and Indy, you guys are not. Yeah, yeah I'm with uh, Jay Ashley. I'm sorry. Sorry, one one person at a time. What was that? I'm with Gio and Ashley. I oh, see so you are. All right. And who are you with, Ben? Uh, I'm with Jay Bond. Oh, let's go. So everyone in here is on Gio's <laughs> team. Oh boy, I should have. I, I should have made a whole. I should have had a whole teleprompter gun. I'm just playing. I'm just playing, but that's good because there's a little bit of, there's a few discrepancies between, you know, Josh's script and our script. There's a little bit more simplified, a little bit less detailed, a little bit less assumptive. Ours is assumptive as all hell. And it just gets, you know, right, right down in the, in the, in the business kind of at the beginning when we tell them what we're going to do today, you know, rather than kind of fluffing it and like keeping it, uh, you know, a little bit hidden, like, like I'd say some of the other scripts do that, that kind of beat around the bush. But we also, to, to flip that, we do a lot of beating around the bush with, um, our ratings, you know, and, uh, you know, we do a lot of like fluff with, you know, the, the discount card and pretty much things that build better character. They sell them more on you. And that's why you'll notice that, that our team, uh, you know, generally gets bigger deals. We, we might be in the house longer, but our deals are, are massive because if someone's going to give you over $200 a month for the rest of your life, um, they, they have to buy you first before anything else, or it's just not going to happen. It's not going to stick. You know, they got to have full certainty in you. Then they also, after buying you, 
they buy the company. And that's why our ratings are a little bit lengthy. And a lot of other teams are like, ah, that's a lot. That's a lot. You know, it's a lot for a trainee to remember. It may be, but I promise you, if you just burn the script into your head, I used to repeat myself going back and forth with Geo till like 1 a.m. And I didn't even get the right script the first day. I got like a whole other one, learned it, then got handed pretty much my ass handed to me on a silver platter because I wasn't saying what he was. And I was like, well, I'm like, what? Is, I, I'm just saying what I learned. He's like, no, 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 no. You want to say this, you know? So back in Arius, it, it was, it was pretty insane when I started, you know, Gio was brand new. He was an essay and um, he was just kind of teaching his guys to do exactly what he did. So that's where I came from. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, me and Gio, I think we're the only two guys right now from Arius agencies that, that, that stuck together and, and, and made it and uh, did very well, you know? So you guys are going to be looking at a little bit of a doppelganger version of him today. I'm just a little bit more goofy. So <laughs> Gio's as goofy as I am, but he puts a good professional front on at all times. <laughs> so that's how we click during training. That's for sure. But more or less guys. Um, so we'll, we'll jump right into everything here. And uh, first thing I want to start with is, is getting people on zoom, you know, so what, what exactly, before I jump into getting people on Zoom, I, I was going to touch base on a few phone call tips, but what did, uh, what were the topics discussed in the last uh, training class? I know you guys had Tommy on Monday. I can imagine that was just million dollar information being spewed out all over the place. But who, who was on Tuesday? Who'd you guys have yesterday? Casey. We had Casey yesterday. What, what did Casey go over? We went down like the daily breakdown. So um, what kind of our schedule is going to look like. So the huddle, um, client services, presentations and things like that. And then we went down to um, lead packs and how that referrals, it was mostly referrals, I feel like, um, and a little bit of child safe kit and things like that. Okay, yeah, we nice. finished on the will kit uh, and that's pretty much where we ended with like a uh, kiss and just like the triple r like uh referrals recruiting retention just basic tips that's how we finish the day nice glad you guys are good note takers note takers, note -takers money are money makers jinx there we go see i need this this, this this room right here and there's a lot of future money in this room right now i'll tell you guys that this is <laughs> i've never had a whole training class of, of, of our deal so that's amazing no wonder right but um, so guys, so that's good. So we really didn't get much on phones or anything like that. I just let Mason in. Mason, you got it. If you ain't gonna, if you ain't gonna give me the respect to join me in the class, man, I at least gotta see your little cute face on the camera. Can't take favorites, bro. I'll boost you out like I do to other people. <laughs> hey, good looking. That's good. Is that Thor? Is that Thor? No, I'm just gonna say it to you all week now. Um. But anyway, guys, so getting people on Zoom. So the main thing here with getting people on Zoom is what happens before getting them on Zoom, which is the phone call. Okay. Now the phone calls, I'm sure most of you know, come from you know our 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 lineage here. The phone call has to be loud. It has to be proud. It has to be um, very urgent sounding. Just just a lot of a lot of presence and oomph coming through that phone line. You know, Geo will will we'll, we'll keep our trainees across the room. You know, unfortunately, uh, Alex knows, and we'll make them. We'll make them. Hey, Vince. Hey, Vince. No, 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 a little bit louder. I can't hear you. I'm all the way over here. Hey, Vince. And it's just like you'd, you'd figure you'd be screaming at the guy. You know, by the time you got on the phone and really did it, but once you start to get that persona down, they don't know you from Adam, so they just assume you're just this swagged out superwoman, Superman. You know, here to deliver their benefits, and, and, and they like that at the end of the day. They want to buy, and they want to trust, and they want to they want to be helped by somebody that has confidence and, and it speaks with function. You know, um, you know, speaks punctually, right? So, on the phone, be loud. Of course, these are tips you already know. But over the phone, solidification is probably the most important thing for getting people on Zoom. So I'll just touch base on that real quick. When you get down to the end of this this phone call, this the the show ratio has never been more important than in my entire career than when we went virtual. Back in the day, you set somebody down, as long as you knew how to have a good system of follow-ups, you were seeing that person no matter what. And there was nothing wrong with it. And it, it made you nervous, it made you feel anxious, you kind of felt 
like you were just annoying the crap out of people, but there's a letter from the president, there's a letter from them, there's a common agreement on the phone that you would be here at this time. If I miss you and I come back with a smile the next day and I took time out of my day and I miss you and I'm driving around spending my money to give you free benefits, you bet your ass I'm coming back with a smile on my face to, to figure out what happened. Hey, Joe, we must have missed you yesterday, right? So there would never really be a person that, that I would miss. And there would never, they can get as awkward as they want and, and they can look down and scratch their head and look to the left and you start to learn how to read body language and you know people are BSing you and you, you get your way in that door, you start building rapport and rapport will fix anything. Rapport will fix any awkward tension on the phone. Rapport will fix any kind of abrasiveness you might've given them on the phone. When you get in that house, I used to just think, just please, just let me get down and rapport. I, you, you, you'll have to love me. I will force you to love me. And it's over, right? Um, so those always become the best sales too. The harder they are on the phone, the bigger the sale is going to be. I promise you that. The easier they are on the phone, I almost like, I'm like ready for a no-show, you know? Because like, it's like, they're just, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, so on the phone, the solidification guys, you know, we, we have a system on our team where we do like three of them. My, my GA, Matthew Hunsberger, kind of is very good at this because he just doesn't care what the person may think. He's very strategic, he's very systematic. He'll say, all right, Mary, key words I'm going to use, guys, is make sure you listen because, like, I'm not just, you don't just want to give a half, half assed version of this. There's, there's stronger words in here. So, Mary, we have you down on the schedule for tomorrow, anytime between five and six. Before I lock you in, do you see any reason why you and your husband, Joe, wouldn't be able to be there tomorrow, anytime between five and six? So key words were, wouldn't be able to be there tomorrow. I'm naming the, the, the place again. I'm naming the husband again. I'm naming the, the appointment time again. And I say any reason. And I talk with that slower, uh, you know, like, it's like exaggerated. You would think when I used to watch Geo do these things, I'd be like, this is a joke. Like this, this, this can't work. These are tough blue collar guys. And he's going all, you know, all, all, I don't want to say gay, but like kind of like very, very happy, very, very like, Everything is great, right? I, I thought me coming from the carpenters union, I'm like, they're gonna eat this, they're just gonna destroy this dude. He's too nice, you know. But he's stern and then he's nice, and then he's stern and then he's nice, and you can't hate that. So do you hit now? Ha 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 on the phone the whole time. But when it comes down to business, do you see any reason why you and your husband Joe wouldn't be there tomorrow anytime between five and six? And as much as I didn't have that kind of facial muscle movement down. I wasn't a salesman before this. I didn't talk like that. It took me a while. I, I, I was pretty hesitant. I wanted to be myself, right? So I'd be like, do you see any reason why that time frame wouldn't work for you? And it just wasn't happening. I was getting no show and I was getting not taken seriously. I was getting a lot of questions I shouldn't have had. So trust me, it, it, it does a lot more than you realize psychologically, you know, to do that with your voice. Um, but, but anyway, they say, no, we should be there. And you'll say, all right, I just want to make sure because we do sit down with eight to 11 members a day. And if I put you down on the schedule and we miss you, that does mean another union member who's been waiting on their benefits wouldn't be able to be seen during that time. So that, that time frame does work for you? And they'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, that will work for us, right? And, and trust me, the movements, the hands, I, I used to have to walk around in area agencies. It was a very big building just like ours. I used to be like almost like some like rapper, like Eminem or something, just over there. Like, do you see any reason why you would, you know, just to get the words out the right way? And when I went home, my mouth kind of hurt. And that was now, now it's just natural. Now I just I go into a training class, I know how to talk to you guys, right? But anyway, guys, so that's the second solidification. And now if you're a little bit of a veteran and you're starting to get a lot of shows you don't have to push everyone to this third one especially if they're like driving on the road and they're about to hang up or something but like i would always try to push a third one when you're brand new why chance your success when you can guarantee it and and stack the odds by doing a third one so they say yes to the second one will be there the third one is all right great um you know the uh the only reason why i asked oh wait now i forgot the third one because i'm talking so much about the second one Second one, you see any reason because if we do put you down, doesn't mean I remember couldn't be seen during that time. Oh, third one is third one is uh 
third one is like, okay, great. Now, you know, glad to hear that you'll be able to be there. I know I'm a man of my word. I'm a woman of my word, whatever. And, and, and when I tell you I'm going to be there for you, you can start to smile. Let them hear your smile through the phone. I, when I tell you I'm going to be there for you, Mary, I promise I wouldn't miss you for the world. So I just want to have your word that you'll be there as well. And they're like, yes, they're going to be like, holy crap. Like, what? why is he doing this? You know what I mean? They're going to be like, this dude's serious, right? And that's what you want them to think. If you read Grant Cardone's book, Seller Be Sold, side note, biggest thing I can attest to my success as a brand new anxious agent is seller be sold. But more or less though, he talks about being almost like uncontrollable, like a little bit crazy. Like Grant, Grant, you got to slow down. Vince, chill out, man, chill. No, I want them to think I'm crazy. I want them to wonder and think that I'm about to bring them the golden chocolate bar to the Willy Wonka factory. They're going to be waiting around chomping at the bit, thinking that this is the most important thing they've seen since, since sliced bread. And if you truly believe that it is, and you can sell the discount card and the no cost benefits, the right way, I really do believe it's very important. I don't think there's another insurance company out there giving thousands of dollars worth of free, no cost benefits, including a three, five, four thousand dollar insurance policy on top of that. I got over five G's in a free benefits package and two hours of education in my time. Who else is doing that? Who else is doing that? So I am very sold on that. And that's part of the thing. That's part of the problem we have as new trainees. If you're not sold on it yourself, if you don't know the why behind what you're saying yourself, you won't get that passion and that, that punctuation in your voice. So ask questions. Don't be a trainee that sits there and just wonders why things are happening the wrong way and you know why we're saying these things. And if you don't silence those, those worries in your head, you're not gonna be able to move forward 100%. So you gotta get those questions answered. We're here to do that for you. You only have so much time and training with these managers. They're like your kid or like your mom, like they're gonna be with you for 12 hours a day. Soak it up. Take advantage of that. Geo probably hated me. I was just mile a minute, mile a minute, question, 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 question. But why? But why? But why? But why? And he'd be like, man, you ever heard of something called coachability? And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I promise I'm not trying to be not coachable. I, I just I just like to know, you know, what I mean, like, I'll do it. Whatever you say, I will do it. But like, I just want to know why so I can get behind it like you do, you know, and you would always be able to give me a great answer, you know, um, that would be something that can give me that push that I need for these clients because we all have big hearts here and we all feel kind of bad when we start to push these people like we're a burden to them of some sort. But when you start seeing sales that you missed, presentations that you missed because you weren't maybe a little bit, um, more urgent and then the next person gets them in their lead pack and they're half as good as you and they sold them some bogus stuff or Jake from State Farm somehow finds them and Jake from State Farm sold them some bogus stuff then you're going to be pretty upset or you can have it happen and learn your lesson the hard way like I did where the dude that you were supposed to sit with freaking died a week later and his wife called you crying asking why you didn't push him harder to get the appointment mm -hmm. it's up to you real shit now, that's the third solidification. Is there any questions on those three solidifications? No. Actually, no. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, will you just, I, I heard everything, wrote notes, but so like specifically, what's the three? So like one is? No problem. I know I talk fast. One is the standard one on the script. Do you see any reason why okay. you and Mary wouldn't be able to be there tomorrow on Zoom anytime between six and seven. Okay. Second one is great. Just wanted to make sure because once we do put you down on the schedule, that does mean another union family who's been waiting on their benefits couldn't be seen during that time. And then they say, no, I get that. I understand that, right? You're tying them down. And here's where the BS starts to come out. Here's where the, what's this about again? Why do we have to meet again? All these questions start to come out that should have been earlier, but people are not really that like they, they, you're from their union. You got mad control already. They don't want to sound dumb and start asking you questions like, wait, what is it again? But when you start solidifying, that's the point of it. It gets these people to start to envision this appointment happening. Now the objections that they had internally will come out. You don't answer those on the phone because you have a poor solidification. That's why you're going to get no show. They're going to keep those objections to themselves. And that's going to be an hour with their daughter playing on the playground or an hour with Vince, who they don't even really understand fully why you're coming there. 
So that's what these, that's what these, you know, solidifications are designed to do for the in-home sales. We used to make them give us two things about their house. I'm pretty GPS dependent in the area, as you can imagine. Is there anything about your place that sticks out so don't pass up a bunch of times? Color of the home, is the car on the, is the, is the numbers on the mailbox? Uh, yeah, car, car, there's a, there's a green Chevy Ford outside and a big F-150. My name is Moolah Mace. I'm from the Berg. <laughs> But uh, more or less, though, with that being said, you know, then those questions would come out and the guy, the guys and girls that would solidify real cool, real cool with you, real hard with you. And they would be like welcoming you like family, tell you that they'll have a drink waiting for you. Coffee. Those good ones. Good ones. They ain't going to go talk to no friend at work. They ain't going to go talk to nobody else. That's why next days are so crucial. They have no time to go ask questions to anybody who may have been seen by a poor agent who just made it all look like a sales pitch. Joe, I, I got some guy, they're on the job site. I got some guy coming on Friday. He's gonna take some of my, my, my bureau clock time up. And, and have you ever sat with them before from American Income? Oh yeah, Joe, you know, don't even, I wouldn't even worry about it. This guy named Mason, he was just flirting with my wife for four hours straight and just tried to sell us more insurance. <laughs> Why do you keep using me as an example? Because <laughs> I love you, Mace. Just let it happen. Like, that was a lot of fun. Pick on Steven down here being all quiet. I don't know who Steven is, man. I can't do that. Oh, come on now. Don't, don't just focus on me here. <laughs> I mean, I know you from being in here the past week, but, you know, I know Mace, like, the, like me and Mace. Mace, you just, just go with it, please. All right. Anyway, guys. Now you F me up. No, I'm just kidding. But now the guy, the guy's telling him, don't, it's just a sales pitch. They forget all about the discount card. They'll forget all about their no cost insurance. They'll forget all about how great the company was and their ratings and what they stand for. Because another agent who has a poor intro has a poor no cost pitch just went right in there. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. They could have loved what they had in the no cost benefits. But when you spend all that time on the sale and you go through all those objections on the sale, that tends to be the only thing that they remember. So next days are great. Saturday morning call sessions to Sunday presentations. That's how you have a 7K week. Like my, my man, Stephen Shealy just had his second week out. 7K in a day, Stephen Shealy wrote. And he, all he did was just memorize our, our, our nice lengthy script that you guys all have, word for word. He's like, when I tell you I didn't do anything else in my life, the week before I came here, but study that script. He's like, I promise you, that's all it was. I'm like, great. That 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 whole week was just sacrificed for the rest of your life. But anyway, guys, so that's the solidifications. Third one, just to finish off, Tal. So the second one was the whole, you know, another family couldn't be seen during that time. The third one is, all right, great. Um, you know, now, um, see, I'm like forgetting it again. The third one was about, what was the third one about? Who was paying attention here? When Moment of your word. word. Your woman your your word. Word. Yeah, I always forget it. Yes, because it's a brand new Zoom one. So I never used it before. Um, but that's the one that you can add in as well. So, okay, great. I just want to make sure because Mary, you can start to smile because this is starting to get a little bit too much. Mary, I just want to make sure because once I do tell you I'm going to do something, I'm a man of my word. I will be there for you and the family. I just want to have your word one more time that you and Joe will definitely be there for us. All right. Great. Do you want to just Thank watch you. the training class too, or what you doing back here, buddy? Good. He said, "Don't worry about him, Vincent." Yeah, go do G. Keep, keep going, bro. You're, keep going, bro. You're doing awesome, guy. Tal, you got a question? No. Okay. Any questions left about the getting them on Zoom, control over Zoom? I'll talk about getting them on. I'll talk about, obviously we didn't go over, we went over the phone solidification. Any questions on solidification on the phones? All right. Getting them on Zoom, guys. So when the appointment time comes, you're going to have, you should have an overbooked schedule. You should have somebody every hour. You should be so overbooked that when somebody doesn't show or someone has to reschedule, you're actually relieved. Instead of the other way around where they no show and you have nothing else but one more. You should have so many on, it's not even funny, especially right now. When Steven Shilly did 7K in a day, he hit, he hit me up the, the, the Friday before Sunday, and he said, hey, man, I'm just pretty stressed, and you know I feel pretty tired working all week like this. He's like, do you think I can take 
Sunday off and, and kind of recharge a battery. And I said, yeah, man, of course you can, you know, of course, you know, but I'd rather you probably call in the morning because that's such a important time that you can't really get back where everyone in America is statistically home more book up for a Sunday and then peace out at 12 and, and, and take off Saturday, 12 to nine. He said, okay, boss. And I said, all right. So Saturday morning comes along. He goes, all right, man, I got six on. I'm going to go ahead and head out. I said, what do you, I said, you're on a roll. You might, you were just there for four hours. You might as well just call for like another hour and get, I'm sure you're going to get three in no time. You're on a roll. Like there's no reason to stop it. And he's like, all right, sounds good. He ended up with like nine on eight on. And uh, yeah, by the end of the night after he made the 7,000 ALP in sales, his nine o'clock was still waiting for him in the waiting room. And they, they, he missed his eight o'clock, gave him a call, rescheduled him, got himself a nice preset for tomorrow. And then the nine o'clock was actually so tired, her husband fell asleep and it was a sigh of relief for everybody. You know, so overbook. But anyway, getting them on Zoom, guys, when it comes time for the appointment, you want to call them right away. You never want to call somebody like, out of that hour time gap you gave them. That's the ultimate way to piss somebody off. We have a three strike rule here in the union where if you no show, no call somebody three times, the PR team is gonna hear about it and you might have your union leads revoked. Cause you can mess around with one person and affect a group of 20,000 union members. Now you're messing with the PR reps salary. You're taking food out of the PR reps family's mouth you're taking food out of all of our, our family's mouths as agents and the, the entire company as a whole's reputation just got shot too. These PR team people work very hard to get these, these contracts booked, very hard. Yes, Sorry to interrupt. Um, when you said when it's time for the Zoom call, we call them what, 10 to 15 minutes before, did you say? Uh, I was saying never call them outside of the hour gap, but yes, when it does come time for the Zoom call, um, you guys are going to want to start using Calendly. Calendly is a paid program. I think there's a free trial as well. You guys can use during training, but it gives them reminders to, and you can customize it. Ashley will tell you exactly what she does morning, day before, hour before it gives them all kinds of reminders. So if you're using Calendly, don't worry about it. Just give them a call right during the time frame. Give them a call. If it's a five to six, give them a call five ten, So they know you're running behind. So they know you're busy. And I would say something like this. I would say, you know, hey, Talia. Hey, Talia, this is Vince Mysterio with American Income. We handle some of your benefits to the Carpenters, Local 250. How you doing today? Great, great. Only reason why I was touching base is because we had that appointment for today, anytime between five and six. And here's the important part. I was just giving you a call to let you know that we just wrapped up with our last member and we're on your Zoom call waiting for you. So we're ready when you are. Uh, go ahead, the wife's home, right? Yeah, wife's home, right? Great, go ahead and grab her, grab a pen and a piece of paper, a notebook, go somewhere like the kitchen table where you can get your phone propped up and I'll stay on the phone with you to make sure you have no trouble. Okay. And that dude, that dude ain't going nowhere, yeah. Or that girl, that woman, Taya. <laughs> that woman carpenter. You know, they used to call, they used to call woman carpenters, sisters in the brotherhood. That's what they used to call them. <laughs> sisters in the brotherhood. Always stuck with me. Those are some badass chicks, but uh, so that's how you get someone on Zoom. Any questions on that? No, no? couple sides. All right. Control on Zoom. Control on Zoom is very, 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 very important. Just to give you guys an idea, back in the day in the field, there was a lot of things we did for control. We would pull up to their house. We would get out immediately. We would have all of our folders, our orals packed up. Everything was made in a nice, easy to go bag, schedule in the hand. By the time I opened my door on like my 100th presentation, I swear I've done it so many times. I was like a cop. I kicked it open. It, it retracted back. I moved out of the way and it closed itself. I'm like, yeah, back door, grab my bag. You're showing confidence, professionalism. You're showing urgency, importance, busyness, right? They, they're watching you right away. So we would have a nice posture going. We'd walk right up to the house. And before I even knew it, this is other stuff Gio did that would just kill me. He would just start waving at fake people in the windows. <laughs> you can imagine Gio right now, just uh, uh, give, giving a few waves. You know why? Can anyone guess why he would do that? Want to show that he's present? Want to show he's present? 
So exactly, spot on. So how many of y'all remember being kids or even now as adults, when someone's coming up to the door, you're like, gosh, <laughs> going to the little people in the blinds. You're like, who is, what is this? Car just flew up into the driveway. You felt the shake in your house. You're like, who's here? You know? And then you're like, oh, it's that American income. Dang, I forgot to tell him that we weren't ready for him today. Go, hi, hi, hi. You know, but now instead he goes, oh, it's the American income guy. And there's us. <laughs> so they're, they're like, oh, shoot. <laughs> you saw us already. Oh, Barry, go get the table cleared. Here we go again. <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm just joking. That's why you bring the most unique values of you and yourself and your life and your personality and you, 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 you combine them in that script and, and they can never say, here we go again, because you're going to bring them a person they've never seen before. And with our script, you're going to bring them a script they've never seen before either. Promise you. <laughs> the, the geo script. But, um, and that's been taken from plenty of people in areas agencies that are highly revered as well. So it's not just like it was one person, one I mean, that, that thing has been like, that's like a top producer script that's been pretty much, you know, elaborated on. Um, but so now over Zoom, we can't do that anymore, right? So back in the day, though, we, we wave at them, we knock, we're always smiling, we have this whole posture going the whole time. They open the door, we say, hey, is this 123 Locust Avenue? Great, I'm Vince, here to handle your benefits today. Wife's home, right? It's the first thing out of my mouth. Wife's home, right? If she's not, reschedule immediately. Please don't even try to test that. You're just going to lose. You're scheduling. Unless they're like MF and their husband and they're like, that guy has nothing to do with me. He is the biggest POS. I have all my bank accounts in my name and absolutely nothing in his name. And we have a divorce set for a month from now. Uh, it's like, maybe I'll make an exception because it's win week and I can win you over and we'll be all right. I'll get you single mom protection over here. But never do one legs. Promise you. Never do. Reschedule. Right? Anyway, after that, we say, wipe some. Great. Awesome. If we could just use your table, it would make things a whole lot quicker and easier. And Gio and I would just start walking right in. Just like, like before the dude even lets us in, you would just start urging towards him. And he would just, yep, this dude's busy, important, and controlled. You come in, you take your shoes off. Guess what they would say when you take your shoes off? No, 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 no. You don't got to take your shoes off. Don't worry about that. And Gio would be like, oh, no, no. My, my mom would beat my butt if I didn't. And he'd take them off anyway. Damn, I'm telling the dude, I'm telling the dude to take him shoes off. He's not taking his shoes off. I can't control him. Next thing out of Gio's mouth. Yeah, I got the table over here. Okay, great. Yeah. Hey, Mary, anyone in the room? Hey, Grandpa Jim. Grandpa Jim, how you doing? G G Vince Maseri with American Income. Quality man. I get, how you doing? Vince Maseri with American Income. Whole room. You're the star of the show. It's your show now. You guys ever seen that movie with Tom Hanks, you know, with the, with the pirates on the boat? I'm the captain now, right? That's what's going on in there. You come in and that's what that's what's going on in there. So that's how we had control in the house. We get to the table and if Joe has a little fancy schmancy padded chair that he sits in every day of his life, that's got all kind of sawdust all over it, we would make him, if, if that was to the right of us, we would make him move because we're right-handed and there's no way anyone brand new is drawn upside down over here. So, hey, I'm right-handed, Joe. If I could just sit to the, if you guys could just sit to the right of me, that'd make things a whole lot quicker and easier. Everybody wants something to be quicker and easier. That's all we're about here in America. So get them to move, that's more control. You hesitate, you give it a little bit of less oomph than you need, and the whole thing can go a completely different direction. They won't move, they'll make a weird face at you, you'll get nervous, he'll get nervous, you'll both, awkward ass sit down kind of yeah it's all right <laughs> so, how, how you guys how you guys doing today yeah no like you gotta just be on like a high literally like i would jam to music things that i knew every word of the song rest in peace dmx you can put what's my name on real quick where the hood at whatever you gotta do and just, just be up in your car or you can listen to any other rock music whatever Get your mouth moving, get your confidence going, get your words and the pronunciations warmed up. You guys ever see a choir before they sing? You know what they're all doing over there? Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. Guys all remember that from grade school, I'm sure. Same stuff, same stuff. <laughs> Mason's dying. 
Bass, I can see you doing this, man. <laughs> Start rapping some of your songs over there. That's all I'd be doing. You got you got tracks all over YouTube. I'd be watching myself on YouTube. Like, that's me right there. Let's go. We're going to get it. We're going to protect Joe and Mary. But you got to come with a level of care. Ain't, ain't all about the money. You get in this kind of mode, it kind of gets you into a in a, in a, in a, in a routine to kind of like force yourself to like these people. No matter what's going on, you're, you're forcing these questions that it's like you're interviewing them in rapport, trying to pry and find things that are going to make you be more interested in them so you can keep that natural ebb and flow going. And that's going to reciprocate from them to you. And that's when you know the rapport has been successful. So now to get him on Zoom and, and getting the control over Zoom, we don't got the house, we don't got the table, we don't got all that, right? We don't got the shoes. So on Zoom, first things first, they hop on. Hey guys, nice to see, hey, you did it. Awesome, you're on. Hey, real quick guys, before we go ahead and continue, can you see me? Can you hear me? Okay, great. Go grab that quality control confirmation number that I had you write down on the phone before we begin. And the reason that we do this, the psychology behind this is obviously they're a little bit older. They're probably older than all of us in this room. They're blue collar. Technology and seeing people on a video is the last thing they thought they would see in their life. From what they saw in their parents' life is the last thing that they thought they would see. So best believe they are not liking it. Unless you're their family, they're, they're still probably not liking it. So you're going to go ahead and reciprocate. You're going to be like showing him that you, you, you the same way. Right? That's what this whole little disclaimer is about, right? So they get on Zoom. Instead of them wondering who you are and why the hell you're on their screen and what's going on here, you're going to flip it. No, no, no. I don't, before I even say a word, Joe, who the hell are you? Go grab that number, bro. I don't even know who you are. I, I, these are these are benefits. I don't know. It, this, is, this is exclusive stuff over here. So trust and believe every time you do that, whether they're starting the Zoom meeting from their couch, like some of these goofballs do, they're going to get right up and they're going to go upstairs and they're going to come, oh, oh, hold on one second. I got it right here. And they're going to, yep, take your time. And you're just sitting there like heart beating your brand new. You're like, okay, what's next? All right, that went good. All right, what's next? What's next? All right, good, good. Just got to keep that going, right? They come back, they give you the number. Perfect. That's the right number. So you must be Joe. You must be Talia. Awesome. Talia, Joe, I'm Vince with American Income. Obviously, we handle some of your, excuse me, benefits to the Carpenters Union, Local 250. How you guys doing today? Good? Great. Hey, I just want to let you guys know, ever since about 70 years ago, we were doing these types of meetings in person. So here I am relating to him not liking this or her. Just about to 70 years ago, we were doing these types of sits in person. Um, we were actually uh, always coming out to the house, explaining these, delivering these, you know, very old school. Now, due to the pandemic and the current situation, in order to protect both you and me, they have us delivering these over Zoom. We've been deemed an essential business. So now we're taking care of you guys over Zoom. Um, so trust me, I understand. I don't like Zoom too much either, Joe. I don't know how many times you guys have been on here. But the only time I'm really on here is with my family. And, and I, I promise you, Joe, if <laughs> I love my family a lot. And now you're showing them your personality too. They're like, this is a guy I can trust. This is a, this is a relatable person. I like him, right? I'm willing to listen to him. He's making me smile. He's making me laugh. He's showing transparency. I promise you, Joe, I love my family, but please don't get your family on Zoom because what I've learned so far during the pandemic is you'll never be able to get them off, right? And they'll start laughing because I guarantee you, Joe's ass was just on Zoom with his family and probably couldn't get them off either. Dad, dad, look at this cool filter I have. Dad, dad, don't leave. So that's a little disclaimer. That's on my script. I'm sure Gio has put it somewhere for you guys as well. Now you've got the control gun. Now you've got the relatability, the comfortability. They like you. And now you start rapport. Who can tell me in this room the five rapport building? Who can tell me one rapport building question? I'll, I'll get off. I'll get, let's get one from each person. Who wants to go first? Steven. How long you guys live there? Is that the full question? Well, uh, how long have you guys lived in the area or how long have you been in that home? 
Nice home. I'll have you been there. There you go. Yep. Yep. Good job. Who's next? Alex. Do you guys have any family that lives around you? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Brothers or sisters in the area? Any family around you? Yeah. That's two. Who's got the third one? Top. Oh, uh-oh. There's too many people. All right. Vivian. Is it Vivian or Vivian? Oh, Vivian is fine. Thank you. Vivian? Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, how long have you been in the area? How many children do you have? Do you have yeah, any children? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's. That's, uh, I think that goes along with Alex's. That's like combined into Alex. Any family in the area, brothers or sisters, you know, children. That's a good, like, that's a good one to ask too, because when people have children, a lot of us are young in here. I used to um, be with someone that had a kid. So I would always be able to use that, like a little card in my, in my pocket. Like, oh, you have a kid? Yeah, I got a kid. Oh, she's so cute. Yep, she's cute and she knows she's cute, right? And then they're like, oh, she knows how to be a parent. We're parents. That's another bonding thing right there. So that's not... Totally scripted, but that is definitely a good question to ask, 100%. Um, I don't know the names off the top of my head. Gina, Gina, I saw you raise your hand. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, what do you guys like to do for fun in the area? Or what do you like to do in the area? Perfect, perfect. Last one. Who's got the last one? Dow. Uh, just how long have you worked at your company, Mary? What about you? Uh, what exactly do you guys do there? Perfect. Perfect. So we got the five questions, right? Now there's a meaning behind these five questions. Okay. There's a weird, there's, there's a psychological meaning behind each of these questions. The first one is nice home. How long have you guys lived there? Right? So I'm not just going to really go ahead and, and jump into this all awkward as, as hell. That's the last thing you want to do. You talk about how busy you are. You solidified three times on the phone, like a madman or a mad woman. And then you just, you're like, all right, well, how are you guys doing today? That's a nice home. How long have you lived there? And they're like, would this dude just come to talk to us today? What, what is going on here? So you got to act like you're doing something. I promise you. If you guys get everything I'm saying down, I promise you, you will have no objection sales. The intro is probably the most important part to a flawless presentation and close. Besides, obviously, the, the, the needs analysis, really. You know, the, the tie downs and the, the whole emotional urgency. But anyway, guys, so the first question before you're asking it, you want to just kind of start typing, typing their information on the laptop and let them know. Uh, don't think I'm being rude on my phone or computer. I'm just punching in all your information. Everything's digital these days, right? But uh, I wanted to ask you guys, that looks like a wonderful home. Is that, is that, did you guys just remodel the kitchen? Oh, oh yeah. Mary, the wives, they'll always love it. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's, that's our new subway tile. Yeah, Bill did that himself. Oh man, Bill, that looks great. I was never able to, do, I can never do anything like that, right? Talking Bill up. Now Bill's whole demeanors go into like a, <laughs> all right, this guy, it's not bad. All right, you know, he's, he's complimenting my subway tiles, right? It's the kind of stuff you want to do in report. Like then she, oh, okay, that, that's, oh, can you maybe move the camera close? Let me, I got to see, you know, I got to see the full kitchen now. Can you maybe go like that with the laptop? And uh, I promise you, they'll be, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's that, and this is that, right? And they'll be all over the place. Is that is that your grandkids on the wall behind you? He is so cute. Oh yeah, that's our that's that's little James, some little chubby little kid in football pads, whatever's going on in the wall. That stuff sells. I promise you, that stuff sells. I promise you. But anyway, nice home. Have you been there in a form like that? That's gonna tell you that this is a family oriented household, right? This guy has core values that are of course for his family. He's worked his ass off his entire life. He's come up with $20,000, probably more in this crazy state of Illinois to buy that mortgage, to get that mortgage loan. So he can save money, he can make money and he can do that over a long enough period of time to have a house. So that's really what the whole nice home, how long have you been there thing is about. Right now you got the kids. Now you got the relation. If you got kids, it's, it's, it's game over, right? If you just bought a house. I just bought a house when I started when I was 21 and I was, I would talk to carpenter Joe about all the wrong things with my house, get him thinking that he's got the juice and then flip it and not give him the juice. And that's how you bond with, with, with other alpha ego type guys that you'll see in construction or in labor industries or really any, anyone sometimes. 
who's thinking that they're going to sniff you out, you know, who's, who's, who's wondering what this is all about, wasting their valuable, precious time. So second question, guys, is um, family in the area. Family in the area is going to give you referrals. The biggest thing about collecting referrals that's going to get you the actual referral is assuming, assuming the referral. When you assume the referral, there's no, there's no hesitations about giving numbers. There's no hesitations about anything. You got them. They don't got the cojones to start questioning you at that point. Now, who do you want to sponsor into the program? I know you said your brother lived right down the street, so we're going to start with him. Guessing he's 817 over here. They're going to be like, uh, Joe, yeah. Yeah, he's 817 over here. Yep, yep. Uh, four, 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 five, nine, or three, two, four, five. That's how you collect referrals. Side note. Third question talks about your parents. I used to think this was really weird when I was brand new. I looked at my girlfriend. I'm like, what in the hell? I'm like, we're, we're talking about like dad's health, like third question in the house. Like, what is going on here? Right. But there's a, there's a way to ask it, right? Family in the area. Yeah, my sister's right down the road. My brother's over here. Oh, great. So you guys grew up here, right? Elaborate. Like I said, lead the rapport, lead the conversation. You guys grew up here. I'm from Pennsylvania. This place is nuts. I can see like a mile, two miles into the, ahead of me because it's all flat. In Pennsylvania, it's all mountains. You know, get him laughing about Pennsylvania, Steel City, wherever you're from. If you're from here, get him laughing about something in the area that they live in. Oh, you're down there in Kankakee? Oh, man. Oh, man. How's it, how is it down there in Kankakee? I heard it's, it's pretty wild down there. Have you, have you been down to the city recently? Yeah, you see them riots over the summer? Oh, man, wasn't that something else? Try to stay away from politics, though. If that dude brings up Trump or that dude brings up Biden, I just, yeah, absolutely, I, I agree. Now, anyway, <laughs> now, anyway, we don't need to talk about all that. <laughs> That's especially these blue, it's probably not going to be Biden. It's probably going to be Trump. <laughs> Oh man. Anyway though, guys, so that's how you can kind of, you guys understanding the idea behind elaborating on these questions. You guys live in the area, your brother's down, oh, your brother lives down there too. So you guys get to see each other a lot and it's not all gonna come natural. You're gonna have to keep trying. This is repetition, 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 repetition. Your first time presentations. It's not all gonna be natural. You're gonna be a little scared, little duckling your first time in there. Walking, asking the five questions, real awkward like, just let yourself go, just let yourself go. One of the five keys to success I'm going to touch base on later. Let yourself go is one of them. Act like you're at a bar meeting someone new. If you can get Mary or Joe swindled at the bar, you can swindle Mary and Joe in the house too. Not swindle in a bad way, but like, you know, get them to like you. You like them, build a relationship. So pride, you live down there, your brother lives down there, you're down the city, we were over there. And now you can add in the busyness again. We were all the way up in Skokie. Then they had us come all the way down to Juliet. And then later this day, later tomorrow, they're going to have us traveling all the way over to Elgin. And they're going to be like, this is insane. This poor man runs around all day with union families. And he's the coolest guy I've ever seen so far. And I'm loving it. All right. That's I'm telling you, that's the secret behind sales. People come up, they think it's like a clothes. They think it's like an art. It's really not. It's just rocking this part. I promise you, but not doing it too much. Don't get friend zone. Get all yeah, 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 yeah on the family in the area question and then be like, okay, now, uh, you know, now the, the, sometimes I was so new, I'd be like, the next thing I wanted to ask you, that's literally what I used to say, <laughs> just to have like a transition because I was like running out. I'm like forgetting my script. I'm like, oh, I also wanted to ask you as well. Um, you know, you, you, you mentioned your brother being down the street. Is, is mom and dad still around? Oh, that's awesome. So you still get to see mom and dad? Oh, how's their health during these crazy times? Are they doing okay? Yeah, I know my dad's 72 now. I'm worried about him. Oh, yeah, my dad's 72. He's, he's 69. He had a heart attack a few years ago. Oh, man, Joe. And now you can not only kind of force yourself to like him, but now you have something really to get to, to relate on, you know, because my dad had a heart attack as well. And I knew people that had heart attacks and that, that stuff's no jokes. So I'm going to Wow, Joe, man, I'll be praying for him. What, 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 uh, what, what happened? And now there's this whole even more side conversation to build up me and him and our relationship. And then I care. And now when it comes time to closing 
and I'm recommending things to him, he's going to know that it's coming from care and not from a salesman. Third question is the parents, the health. That's going to tell you about their health, their family's health. If their dad had a heart attack at 69 and this dude's sitting here at five foot five, 300, probably coming soon, if not already happened already, right? So that's going to tell you about their health. Fourth thing is the, the whole, how long you've been down at the carpenters union? What do you, what's a day look like down there? That's not only good for, for the client to start talking about that, what they do, you know, that's, that gets them talking. Everyone likes to talk about themselves. Remember that. If you've ever run out of report questions and it's over and it's going awkward, find other things to get them to talk about themselves. That never fails. It's going to show you how committed they are to the union. It's going to show you how many times probably someone from American Income seen them. And uh, it's also going to get you knowledgeable on what each trade does and what each day in the life would look like. You ask that question enough times, by the time you get to your 50th guy, you're going to be like, oh, you're a carpenter. Do you do commercial or, or, or woodworking? Oh, you deal with the steel commercial? But, oh, he's going to be like, oh, this guy, this guy knows, right? Last question is, what do you like to do for fun in the area? What do you like to do for fun in the area is going to tell you where they're spending their money. I got to pull out a nice emotional clothes like I was just about to get into. And if I got to pull out the, the, the bar Louie down the street and, and his smoking habit as, as compared to 30 bucks a month, I will. Second option B, option B is 120 bucks a month. That's just two casino trips a month. If you're anything like me, that's probably just about one, whatever, right? And I don't even go to the casino, but I'll say that stuff. Mace goes to the casino. <laughs> Mace be like, why are you thinking of me? <laughs> all right, but uh, guys, that's all the report holding questions and what they mean. Don't want to keep us falling asleep here. We can continue into the uh, intro or we can take a five minute break. What do you guys want to do? We've got about probably 35 minutes left. Let's continue. I'm okay with that. If I'm going to run real quick and take like a two minute break and I'll be back. All right. That's it. Two minute breaks for everybody. Kyle did it. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> So real quick on number four report, uh, uh, how long they've been at the union. I, I know that that shows like their commitment to the union and whatnot. I'm just, um, what, what else is that showing aside from, um, you know, if they're happy at work and things like that nature? You know, from, from, from my standpoint, being in the union before, I feel like, you know, to ask them what, what they do down there is really just to get them to talk and open up. That's something that's pretty universal. Even if you suck at building rapport, they're going to tell you what they do down there. They usually take pride in it. Um, how long they've been working there, I feel like on top of their commitment, it just shows stability. It shows, you know, stability, income, and, you know, I guess that would be, I guess that would be about it. When you start to get to, to 100 presentations and above, you understand that if someone's been there for over 10 years, they've seen a few American income agents before you, and you can start to strategically change your pitch up a little bit. You know, you can start to bring out things that probably weren't brought out before and kind of use that as why you're different, right? Did the last gentleman go over that? You know, how many times has anyone ever come out here before? Yada, yada, yada. But all, all too often when they've been in the union the longest, that's when they're the most like, that's when they're the most like guarded. They're like, what is this? You know, they're, they're ready for like, I, I just feel like that's when I know I got to put on the juice. It's pretty much what I've gotten from that. Okay, much appreciate. Thank you. Welcome. Does that mean when they met with someone, like an agent before, does that mean they went over that same presentation that we're going over? Um, not our team, no. They probably saw 12 laptop videos. But they, they, the, the, the AIL Plus card is brand new as of last April. The wheel kit, fairly new. And um, even if you know on the phone that they've been there for a while, or they tell you that on the sit that they've been there for a while, I'll bring out the free living and final wheel kit that we're supposed to give to the wheel kit leads. I'll, I'll keep one of those on deck just to pull it out and impress them with. But 
wouldn't recommend anybody brand new to do that because you guys might stick there. You might stay there for a whole hour trying to trying to go through that real quick. Waste time and not even really build any value. You'd probably put them to sleep, you know, unless you know how to present it quickly. But uh, yeah, they've seen the presentation. They, they, they see the idea. They know that there's additional benefits and that there's no cost benefits as well. But a lot of times uh, before we came out here, the only other agency that was out here, they had a completely different set of no cost benefits. They had a completely different pitch. And even though it's the same concept, you know, most of these people, most and myself included, don't even remember what I ate for breakfast a week ago. So if it was a year or two ago, it, it ain't, it ain't going to matter. Yeah. And then if they're seeing you now, does that mean that they said no before? Not necessarily. If they've been seen before, their card gets reset for a year until they fill it out again. So they're initially filling it out again, knowing that they could be contacted by us. You know, so it, it doesn't necessarily mean they've been they've not been seen before. And I always ask them sometimes, has, has anyone has anyone of my guys or girls ever been out here to deliver your benefits? And if they're brand new, if they're brand new in the union, oh, that's the best. That dude's gonna just listen to everything you say. <laughs> hey Vince, you good, bro? You need me to bring you a water or anything, bro? Before we start, you all right? Water would be great, Mace. Hey, I got you, brother. I got you. You don't move. I got you. Aww. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. I'll go. Here he comes. It's going to come busting in here. Is it hot in here? It's kind of cold. Hmm. I wonder if the air is on. You're sitting right by the fan, maybe. No, that's like that's for the winter. That wouldn't be on. Oh. It's it's April, but over here where I am in Illinois, it's like forty something degree. I hope you guys are where it's like nice and toasty, and but it's like forty degree right now. Uh, it was yeah. seventy last week, and now it's like fifty. Yeah, I I was hoping it'd be like 60s, 70s, you know, but no. Yeah. It's springtime. Where's my son? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, energy drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys want to go stretch your legs? That that'll wake you up. A Coca Cola. Damn. You didn't have any That's water. That's the opposite of water. Gonna make me sweat yeah. even more. <laughs> you got two people in your room. Pick on someone else. Quit coming to me. Every <laughs> me. I'm not even supposed to be in here. Keep picking on you because you're hot. Yeah, I wanted you to be in here. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> uh, I, I just, uh, what did I pick on you for? Whatever it was. It was oh, a casino. Oh, Thor. Oh, Mason this. Mason that. Hey, Mason. Go, Mason. Hey. Flirting with, 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 uh, with wives. <laughs> yeah, like what? I mean, Thor isn't necessarily picking on him. You can take that as a compliment. No, he's a bully. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the last person that I, I, I hope. I hope you don't mean that. Mace. I still like you. I still like you. It's all about perspective. He's making you the star of the show. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I want people to remember your name. <laughs> that winter smile you got. Hey, Vince, guess what? <laughs> See, he likes it. He likes it. All right, we all back. Woo! Woo! Second half, let's go! All right. Get out of this chair. Okay. My 1990 Mafia pants. All right. So now we move into the intro. I'll wait till Mace finds his seat again since. He must have got lost in the two foot hallway walk to his office. Like 20 seconds. Yeah. Very hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. Too much going on. I'm about to scream, Mace. Hey, Mace. Mace. Probably just distracting someone on my team like usual. That's probably what's going on right now. 
All right, guys, we're going to start down. So uh, the, the, the intro, right? The intro. So this is where it really, really, like, on top of the rapport, like, these go hand in hand. The rapport and the intro, they go hand in hand. Um, so, you know, with our intro, after the rapport is over, you, you'll – does anyone have questions on the rapport before I move on, like, what to do if they're being – like, do you guys want me to role play like someone that just is dead and not giving, not giving you any like you know feedback? Or is there anything that you guys have seen in your couple sits and have any questions on while I'm here? I mean, I'm assuming that you are going to run into people who just simply don't want to give anything, real short answers and whatnot. So, how do you go about trying to develop that um, when you haven't really gotten anything to build on off of yet from them? Great, great question. Great question. Uh, you want to role play? You want to be the guy that does that? Okay. All right. So, Stephen, nice to see you. That quality control number, we got it all taken care of. Keep in mind, I, I'd, I'd have you already moving for me, but all right, Stephen, got you. Uh, so, so you must be Joe. You must be Steve. All right, great. I'm Vince with American Income. Handle some of your benefits. Um, go grab the quality control number. Great, we got it. Okay, Stephen. Um, don't think I'm being rude on my phone or computer. I'm just punching in your information real quick. Um, but I, I wanted to ask you, man, that looks like a, a really nice home. How long have you been living there for? A little while. I'm sorry, what was that? Just just a little while. Not, not too long. Just, just a little while, not not too long. Uh, you're down, in, it looks like you're down in Skokie, right? Correct. Skokie, awesome, awesome. I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania, my man. I, I've, I've never been up here before. They got me traveling all over the place. Um, everyone tells me that, that that lives in Illinois that they hate this place. Is, is that is that what you feel as, as well? Yeah, it could be better, right? Could be better. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. How long have you lived in Skokie for? About five years now. Five years? Okay, not not too long, not too long. And uh, and I know. So if you were there just there for five years, did you grow up in Skokie as well? Uh, no, I'm, I'm from uh, Chicago proper originally. You're from Chicago? Oh, okay. Wow, Chicago seems like like a whole other world out there. You know, when, when I go down to the more country areas down down in the, the, the lower part of the state, that they, they're all they kind of remind me of Pennsylvania people. You know, more country and family oriented. And then you guys up there in Chicago, I, I think. I think I like the guys in Chicago a lot better because you guys just seem more real. You know, you guys have just seen some stuff growing up, huh? Yeah, okay. I mean, I suppose we got a little more going on than out in nowhere, Pennsylvania, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And more more than those guys down south, right? Have you ever been down south to like Joliet and like Peoria and all those areas? No, I try not to go down there, honestly. It's not my favorite. <laughs> <try> not <to. laughs> that's funny, you know, Stephen, because that's the same thing that those guys say about you. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but I, I see I see where you're going with this because even in myself, as I was trying to be close off to you, you can't help but you know, you just give a little bit more. I mean, it's, it's strange, even though it was all BS that we were making up, but I see where you're coming from. <laughs> I kill him with the smile, I promise you. I don't even like my right, smile. Right. I really, you know, like I just uh, just uh and then and, and it takes a while. It's not gonna happen at first, you know. At first you're gonna drive home, you're gonna be like, man, that was effing terrible you know but um it, it, it comes with time so i would have kept going from there i would have mentioned how like uh geo always says a good line about chicago people he'll he'll be like you know when he's down south he'll flip it he'll be like those guys up there suck you guys are great right and and he'll be like man I, i've never been to chicago i don't know if you guys have ever been to pittsburgh but you know we got some we got some bad areas in chicago I, i've or uh we got some bad areas in pittsburgh you know I, i've seen people you know, do some crazy things down there, but but Chicago. When I went down there, man, there was there was there was. I don't know if I was in the wrong part of town, but there was bullet holes and and some of the front doors. There was, you know, I, I felt like I needed to go get my open carry, you know. And they're gonna be like, they're gonna be like, yeah, as they look at their country safe of five rifles on the wall, right? They're gonna be like, yeah, absolutely. And they all that's what everybody says down down south. They all say that, that Chicago is like a whole different world. They don't like it. It's, you know, it should be its own state, like California, the whole thing. Right, and um, then everybody at the city says the opposite. So, okay, great info. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I want to say, yep, yep, absolutely. Right. So I'm gonna keep trying at you, and then if you don't give me, I'm gonna keep trying at Mary. 
I'm gonna go to Mary next. Mary is that huh? How the hell did you guys how did you guys meet each other? Oh don't even get me started. I'll tell you how we met each other. He, he, he was on a, yeah. And then, oh, who chased who? Who chased who? As you type one away, of my think, favorite uh, things to ask. Yeah, yeah, encouraging it. Who chased who? They go, oh, I'll tell you right now, you chase me in your dreams, Mary. No, Joe, you know you chased me. You couldn't resist this. And then you got them, you got them going at each other, right? So, so, and then, and then, and then you, as you get this stuff out of them, you pull stuff out of you that relates to that. Ah, I'm the same way. My girlfriend will tell you that I chased her probably, probably a little bit too long. She, she might have thought I was like a whatever, right? Just whatever you guys think. Make sense? Oh, Actually, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so specifically for myself, um, maybe this, I don't know if it pertains to you guys, but so since I'm not from that area, I'm just wondering um, how, so I have to go to about it in a bit of a different way. I can't really, um, you know, like how, how right. should I go about that? Yeah. I mean, now I'm in California, so it's like, oh, well, hey, you got a lot to talk about. Those are some, those are some, uh, well, Colorado, I feel like, you know, the, the biggest thing there would be like, um, you know, like you, the same approach, you know, you guys, you guys grew up here. Okay. I, I grew up in, where did you grow up? Oh, wait. Okay. So if, are the leads going to be for Colorado, right? Because, or are they going to be Illinois? Illinois. Okay, so I'm going to be speaking to people from the Illinois area. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where, and where all the leads are going to be from. Oops, sorry. Oh, you're good. No, you're all good. the leads are going to be from Illinois then. Every single one. Uh, the company is working on a way to get access to other state directors' leads right now from other states, um, but until that point, we can only. Be allowed to run the unions that are assigned to us in Illinois. Now, if you have a non-resident license in Colorado and non-resident license, in, or vice versa, if your resident state is somewhere else besides Illinois, you can sell anybody that you want down there. They can be in the union; it doesn't matter. You just aren't going to get those cards. You know, you're not going to get the cards. those are right now most likely assigned to somebody else's agency. But they are working on that. Well, so, am I the only one things? that's in Illinois? I'm in Illinois. Oh, well, I know you're in Illinois because you're in the main office right now, but um, okay, hold on. Let me see anybody else. Is anybody else? In? No? Okay. You yeah. are? Okay, of course. You're in the office. You brought water to him. Okay, gotcha. All right. <laughs> <laughs> where, uh, where, where's the other, where are you guys from that aren't in Illinois? And, the, and, and Ben, you guys from Pennsylvania? Please stay Pittsburgh, up. home of the Steelers. <laughs> yeah! Oh, Go! Yes. <laughs> yeah! Black oh, Star. Yeah, I like that water bottle. Let's get the terrible thousand over here, dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm one state over. I'm in Indiana right now. So and I'm, no, I'm from no. Jersey. So I'm originally a Giants fan. Now I'm a Colts fan. So no Steelers for me. Oh. Sorry. Wow, <laughs> she's a fist pumper. <laughs> oh, and not anymore. <laughs> Jersey Shore is not on the air anymore. That's those days are gone, right? Oh, yeah, what a time that. that was. Watch <laughs> that show come out. That was. Oh man. Oh, I can't wait till we all just aren't in this class. We're actually somewhere on a boat in in Jersey or somewhere in the other part of the world, and all of our trainees are in this class, and we're all making. A pretty good life out of it, helping others. Guys, got to keep your vision close. It's going to get lost in all this madness. You got to keep it close. I promise you. Can I just it. can I just interject wow. and say, um, I was actually wondering the same thing though, because I'm from Pittsburgh, so I don't know a ton about like Chicago or Illinois. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's good because now you can you can you'll learn from the clients. So. Okay. Just, just do what I was doing there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Illinois. I'm from Pittsburgh. What, Skokie? What's, what's Skokie? Is that, that sounds like almost like, that sounds like a cookie or something. Where, where is that at? You know, say silly <laughs> stuff like that. Oh, uh, it's just this little town. It's, it's like about. Is that close to Chicago? Uh, okay. Do you go down there? I, I heard it was a beautiful, you know, beautiful like little ocean front from Lake Michigan. Is that? Oh, uh, okay. No, you don't go down there. Oh, you're, you're way down south. Oh, so you're. You're in like the middle of nowhere, like in the Twister movie, then, right? Because I know I, I know it's all flat down there, right? Uh, okay, uh, all right. 
right, cool, cool. What do you guys even do for fun down there? Oh, uh, nothing much. Nothing much. We just this, that, and the other. So, so you're so I'm guessing you're a Cubs fan. You're 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 a, you're a Bears fan. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh man. And they're gonna be like, why? Where are you from? You're like, well, I'm all I'm all over the place. I'm handling these members, that members. I'm actually from Pittsburgh. So I'm a Steelers fan. And they're gonna be like, oh god. They're gonna you know. Then you got a nice conversation started right there with the Steelers. Um, I talk about how Pittsburgh is beautiful. Pennsylvania is beautiful. There's hills. There's mountains. There's trees. Out here, there's streets and trees and more streets and more buildings and concrete. And I, I went back to Pittsburgh after being out here for a few months, and I was like a kid in the candy shop. I was like, wow, I guess it's awesome, you know. So I talk about stuff like that. I make them laugh. I just make them see that I'm I'm just just like them. I'm a human. I got flaws. I got jokes. I got emotions. Whatever. So you'll you'll get it. Just keep keep trying and look it up. Don't be afraid to look it up. Before you go sit with them, look up their city. You might see that it's a little mom and pop store for the groceries right next door. And they're all the way down in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by cornfields. And you're going to be like, oh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm from Pittsburgh, but you're way down. You're in the middle of the cornfields down there, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, went, we went out there a few years ago. You had like a mom and pop store next to you, right? J Joe's, Joe's Candy Shack? Is that? Oh, yeah. I've, I've been there before, right? You can take it any way you want. Well, hey, Indy, I mean, you know, if you have any questions and if I can answer, I'll be happy to help you. And, you know, just just don't don't hesitate to ask. If I know, I'll definitely help you. OK, gotcha. All right. Are you guys all in that uh, group message uh, on group me? So Gio has said that uh, it's a privilege and that we will go in the group me when we make our first sale. So, OK, <laughs> yeah. that's what he told me. Okay. Tal, Tal got snuck in there earlier. Tal got snuck in there. It, it is, it is, a, he's, he's right. He's right. Oh, as Love in you guys will fly like down here, here and be in the meeting? Is that what you meant? Or what is the group meeting? There, there's a group me. So a group me is an app. It's like a, like a, like a WhatsApp almost. Oh, and so the whole, okay. yeah. So that's, that, that's okay. what it is. Okay. Gotcha. Basically what I meant by it is we should like, get each other's numbers maybe in the chat or maybe if you're like nah I don't need these guys numbers fine but if if maybe we could like make our own little group chat because we're all training together so <laughs> oh okay I gotcha yeah, 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 yeah. I just put mine in the chat so okay cool let's, let's yeah I'm not that happy, so you let me know and I'll join yeah. I didn't even know a group group meet app so I was like okay let me know I'm fast learner though so okay <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> Yeah, don't hesitate hey, to ask. Hey, I'm in the group me. Okay. I'm in the group me. Turn up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Sorry, Ben. All Sorry right. to right. oh, No, no, you're fine. <laughs> the, the banter, is the banter over? Oh, good. Okay, great. So, um, no, that was perfectly fine. You guys should be right by each other's side, going through this together, like, like, you know, like brothers in arms, like, like, like a team, like a sports team, you know, same stuff. You guys, you guys need that. So that's good. That's a good point. Tom. Um, back, back to the intro, right? So, so the intro, right when rapport is done, they're laughing, you're laughing, you can't shut them up. They can't shut you up. That's a good way to know it's time to move on. Right. And it's a little bit more controlling too, because you're like, ha, ha, ha. all right, guys, I got, you know, time to get serious, right? Now they know you're about, you're about it, right? So you're like, all right, guys, I, I could probably talk to you all day. Uh, Mason, Talia, you guys seem like great people. Ben, Steven, you guys are wonderful. Indy, uh, we, we, we just, the only thing is, though, I feel like I could probably talk to you all night. So I wish I would have made you my last appointment, but I'm going to go ahead and get started here because we got about seven other members right after you. And they're just, again, this is like the fourth time you've said something that just shows that you're just a madman running around the whole world doing this for the humans, right? So crucial. I'll go ahead and get started. Do you remember filling out this three by five yellow card? Share your screen, right? Make sure you share your screen. I had a couple of new trainees like hold their phone up to the camera. I was like ready to lose my mind. Share your screen. Give them a second to read it. That's going to that's gonna build credibility. They're going to see their handwriting right there. And they're going to be like, oh, Joe, I told you you filled it out this time, right? Oh, uh, so that's your hand, right? Okay, great. You guys remember when you did that? You can ask them. You guys remember how long ago it was? Yeah, it 
was about two years ago. Yeah, see, I told you, we just don't come around too often. Glad I caught you. That's why they shipped me all the way out here from Pennsylvania. There's more and more and more and more busy control, important urgency. This is how you get absolutely zero. I want to think about it. Um, now, go ahead and get started, right? You show the card. Now you show the letter. So you fill out the card. How about that letter of explanation that was from your president that talks about the benefit program? Do you guys remember reading that? And just to let you guys know, they all get it. Every single one of them gets it. It comes stapled to their cards. Don't let them tell you otherwise. I don't say, did you get it? I say, did you read? Okay, great. So uh, at the top here, I'll share my screen, kind of paraphrase it. I won't just jump right down to the bottom. I'll be like, at the top there, you got your Carpenter's Local 250 header. Right, because that's it looks just like their other mail. It has the same layout as their pension, as their health insurance. It's like the same stuff. The trustees and the presidents on the side. So I'll be like, all right, you got everything up here. It just says, dear member, as an active or dues paying member in the you know local 250, you have a no cost insurance policy, and um, this is these benefits are provided jointly through American Income, 100% union company, and and your local 250. And then, I'll, and then I'll start jumping around. I'll be like, then it kind of goes over the no cost benefits here. And, and, and you want to look at their eyes here. You want to see them reading this. You want to get creative. You want to get professional. If you got a touch screen, if you got, you know, any Windows computer, you can usually use a highlighter and you can start highlighting through as you speak these words, you're moving through them. That's good. That's, that's like, now you got like this teacher to student relationship going and they're going to read what you want them to read, right? So I mean, like, and then some of the no cost benefits and at the very bottom, it's signed off by your president, Jimmy president. You know, Jimmy, right? You know, Jimmy, right, Gina? Probably doesn't, yeah. right? Probably not, right probably won't. Oh, okay, Jimmy, Jimmy's a great guy, right? Act like you know. Oh yeah, Jimmy's a great guy. Now, anyway, so Jimmy's the one that's signed off on these benefits and at the very bottom of his signature, it just says that an AIL representative who is a member of the local 277 will call on you to deliver your certificate of coverage, provide your no cost benefits and witness your beneficiary designation. And I say it with those pauses and I say it with those voice inflections because I promise you if you don't and you say it, now you, you know, uh, an AIL representative who is a member of the local 277 is gonna call on you to deliver your certificate of coverage, provide your no cost benefits, and witness your beneficiary designation. They're gone, they lost them. Probably lost them like five seconds ago. The average attention span in America is, is seven seconds, eight seconds. Okay, so we're and, and the average mouth can speak like one to two hundred words per minute. So you know you got to understand that like every ten seconds you should be changing your stuff. If you're not, keep reminding yourself. I used to like remind myself like halfway through I'd be like getting tired, like getting monotone. I'd be like, and I just like I'd like reset, right? So. Um, provide no cost benefit. witness your beneficiary designation and also Joe as I get louder it also lets you know that American income and or that that your union also sets you up with permanent insurance benefits as well that you'd have to qualify for now um, yeah in a, in a B union by union sphere that you'd have to qualify for and right after that I unshared the screen because the next couple lines talk about how it's on a voluntary basis <laughs> And I just want him to assume that this is like every other employer where we handle your permanent life insurance. So today's the day. That's what happens at most employers in this country. Here's your stuff. Here's your options. We'll be back in a week. Time to decide. No one questions it. They just roll with it. We want to have the same thing going. So I unshare my screen. I'll be like, did you guys say you made it to any of the meetings where they discuss this benefits program? No? Okay. Oh, no problem, Joe. I'll fill you in on what you may have missed. So they set you up with four no-cost benefits, right? One of which is that insurance policy that would go to your wife. God forbid something were to happen to you, Joe. Now, Alex, if something did happen to Joe, you wouldn't be calling up the union wondering where all that money is. You'd be calling up our company, American Income, because we're the ones responsible for paying that out. Reason being is we're the only 100% unionized insurance group in the country. Let that sink in for a second. That's why they set you up with your permanent insurance benefits as well, 
that you have to qualify for. Now we noticed at the union, there was no paperwork filled out for your additional insurance benefits, your permanent insurance benefits, life insurance, if you're feeling extra control, there was no paperwork filled out for your additional life insurance, your permanent life insurance benefits. Now, so our job today is to get you enrolled into those benefits. Now, Mary and Joe, if you can qualify and, and these benefits make sense, we absolutely have to make sure we get you enrolled today during your enrollment period. If they don't make sense or you can't qualify, we just simply wouldn't worry about those benefits and we would just get you out the no cost package and be on our way. Does that make sense, Joe? Does that sound fair enough what we're gonna do today, Joe and Mary? Promise you, that's why people say our script is long and hard to teach and stuff like that because people don't understand how to use their voice. I don't think anyone in here missed any of that, right? Was that confusing to anybody? Would that make sense if I came to your house and said that? Now, if I said it in a monotone voice and didn't change it once, you'd be like, yeah, that makes sense what we're gonna do today. And then you start going. Here's our ratings. They're like, why the hell is he going through these ratings? Here's these no cost benefits. Oh, these are cool. All right, term and whole life. Yeah, what the hell's going on here? Needs analysis, options. I didn't know any of this was supposed to happen today. What's going on? What is this? I want to think about it. So I don't care how many times you got to repeat this part, say it till you're blue in the face. Does that make sense? If they hesitate for one second, they'll be like, you know, know the body language. If you see him hesitating, hey, Mary, I just, I'll say it. Don't worry. I'll, I'll go ahead and reiterate and I'll say it again. I may cut it down, but I'll say it again. Yes, Talia. Um, what did you, sorry, what did you say after the part where it's like, if it doesn't make sense or we couldn't get you qualified, then we'll just send you on your way with what? Good question. So if it doesn't make sense or you can't qualify, we just simply wouldn't worry about the additional benefits and we would just get you out the no cost benefits and be okay. on the way. Okay, I understand. Thank you. It might be like an extra like Vince sentence right there, like the whole on our way thing. I like I, that I like though. And to know like, yeah, exactly. You know, like it's like, it's not some like, we're here only for the insurance, you know what I mean? Can't tell you how many, hours and presentations I've done where I've sold nothing, literally been happy to help that family out. Where another, I'm gonna get a sale, probably because I wasn't playing my numbers. I ain't blaming anyone but myself. Something to learn in every house. 1% better, compounding interest. Now that's the intro guys. Any other questions on the intro? The why we're there? Hey Vince, I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't know if it's just me, but it uh, seems like the camera's freezing and the audio is going in and out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Same for us. Uh, like you're, you're currently pretty frozen. Frozen? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep, frozen, just, just audio. All right, cool. Any questions on the why we're there? Gina, was that a, no? Okay. No, we're good, yeah, thanks. All right, guys. Last thing, home stretch, the ratings, the ratings, the ratings, the ratings. Equally as important as the rapport and the why we're there, the ratings. All right, guys, now any questions on what we're gonna do today? Is that fair enough? Does that make sense? Fair enough, right? Fair enough's a great, strong word, fair enough. All right, so I'll go ahead for you guys now they typically have us play about six or seven videos um they just kind of do my job for me i, I don't want to bore you to death with all those videos um if anybody asked how they were great we watched them all with a big smile right i said we watched them all smiling big and they're gonna it's gonna transfer right into them they're gonna be like <laughs> you got it right and if hey you asked about how long they've been in the union if i know they've been seen before that that question is going to that that's going to get them too. that's going to make you stand out. Your whole objective is to be the, the, the most unique salesman representative they've ever seen. Right. Just distancing yourself from the average salesman as much as you can. So there's usually six or seven videos they have me play. I'm not here to bore you with any of those today. Um, 
they pretty much just do my job for me. I'll add in there sometimes. I'm sure they played those last time, right? And they'll be like, oh, yes. And I'm like, all right, so I'm not gonna bore you with any of those, but I do just have to play this one video. It's just gonna tell you a little bit about who we are and who handles your benefits. I play the Richard Trumka video. Powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. I don't know what you guys know about unions in this room, but I promise you, your control coming into these sits is through the freaking roof. You're from their union. You're contracted through their union. Their union provides their livelihood. Their union provides their pension, their health insurance. Everything that they've done and worked for for in their entire life has been a result of this union. And they've paid thirty, ten, twenty thousand dollars worth of dues to this union as well. You have to understand it's very, very, very powerful. We're the only ones doing this. You're the only one that can diminish that. So just keep in mind that they're ready to listen to you until you show them reasons not to. Uh, Gina, yes. Yeah, sorry to interrupt again, but um, the video that you said that you play that you, know, you just mentioned, which video is that? Uh, I think Geo doesn't play it sometimes. Um, the Richard Trumka video, it's when you hit the, it's when you hit on EAP, you hit union. Mm -hmm. It's the first video. It's right. literally the president of the AFL CIO. If you guys don't oh, know who the AFL CIO is. He's talking about, he's always talking about like, oh, AIL, you know, we wouldn't be here without you guys and, and all that stuff. Yes. Okay. All right. Does anyone know what the AFL CIO stands for in here? No, Alex, I told you in our interview, I feel like you should know. I just can't remember. Now. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I knew I, I had to get you. The American Federation of Labor. American Federation of Labor. Congress of Industrial Organizations. They might not even know what that is. You start to get real comfy here on your fourth sit of the day. You pull that out real quick. This is Richard Trumka. He's the president of the AFL-CIO. You, you know who the AFL-CIO is, right? Uh, honestly, not. No, no, not really, Mr. Mr. Union Representative. Please tell me, right? That's the kind of control you want. Oh, no problem. It's the American Federation of Labor, the Congress of Industrial Organizations. You know, the, the, the organization that all the international unions are a part of. No? Okay, no problem, Joe, no problem. So every, so this is their president, Richard Trumka, and every single April they get together at their labor advisory board meetings and they, they go over the, 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 they discuss the biggest problems facing Union America today. This is just a short clip of him thanking American Income for helping out with two of the biggest concerns they saw. One, our benefits to work are great. They're amazing. But what happens to our benefits to work when we, I don't know, let's say quit, get fired, retire. Hell, even if we're laid off for a few months, do you know what happens to your workplace benefits, Gina? They disappear. They go away. Exactly. They go away. So the second reason they're thanking us, uh, the second thing, the concern that we're helping them out with is a lot of families were passing away without wills in place. And um, there was a lot of fighting. You know, there are a lot of families were fighting over each other's belongings. There was a lot of money going unclaimed. So what they did is they set you guys up with a free last one testament today. You know, I don't think that was perfectly on script, but a lot of families were fighting over stuff, belongings, yada, yada, yada. That's why they set you up with a free last one testament today. And they'll go, hmm. and this whole time, they're just like, this is great. How the hell have I not seen these people before? Like they're just, they're just ready for greatness right now. And that's why you have some pressure in this job. And you gotta be, you gotta have some, you gotta have some mental toughness and some, some big, some big pride, and some big confidence. Um, only way to get confidence is reps and, and knowledge. Okay. Anyway, guys, so you tell them that's the second reason, right? Will kit, they set it up for you. And I'll say, and then I'll unpause the video and I'll let Richard Trump can finish up. I just want to thank American Income from the strawberry fields of California to the burr, 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 Freedom Rides. Right. Unfortunately, some people that have been in the union for a while might start getting mad at Richard Chunka, but you know, I get mad at a lot of things in this country, including our presidents and politicians. So it's, it's, it's nothing different. Um, 
With that being said, Richard Chunker video ends. I end it. I don't let it continue into all this other stuff. It's about to continue. And we are an international company with thousands of representatives, right? I'm, I'm already about to tell them that with the ratings. It's cool, right? So I'll just pause it. I'm like, all right, guys, the rest of the video is pretty cut and dry. Um, like I said, if anyone asks, though, we, we watched them all, right? Okay, great. Now, there's only just two more things that we mentioned about the company before we get started. And you're just, you're just almost there. And when I was brand new, I always thought, this is so much. I'm going to lose them. They're going to hate me. Just get that stuff out of your head. I promise you it's okay. Keep smiling. Keep doing what I'm telling you. You're, you're all right. You got them captivated. It's two things that we mentioned about the company. One, in order to be a part of the union program, you have to, have to, have to be in the union. No offense to Joe Schmo down the street, but he can't just call the company and get a policy with us. Reason being, and this is a, this is a very iffy part that we're probably going to have to stop saying soon because we're, we're, we're it, not every union's dues go towards this. So it's, it's, this is a touchy subject. So I would honestly recommend probably saying reason being is because, you know, I don't even know another way to say the union dues part. Like some of your union, reason being is because some people don't pay for your union union's contract. I'm trying to think of another way to say this. 15% of the union dues goes to the union contract. It's, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's hard to kind of get around, but I, I just feel like as much as me and Gio are growing and, and the more people we have out there saying it, some like gun-ho union dude that goes to every meeting and like writes down where the money's going might, might just call you out, you know, and you just, just be like, hey, like I, could be your union, Joe. It's, 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 it's just a rough estimate, you know, 15% of your union dues go towards these no-cost benefits, right? Could we say approximately 17% or something along yeah. those lines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to sales, guys. These are sales tactics. This is called fluff. You're doing it for the greater good of the client. Trust me. And, and, I, and I promise you, our, our, our rates are highly competitive. So it is true. It's not like we're telling a lie here. 15% of your union dues go towards these no-cost benefits and the additional ones as well to make them cheaper. Another 10% American income puts back into the program as well, simply because we don't advertise. Talia, have you ever heard of American income before, before today? Uh, no, I don't think so. Probably not, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a trick question, right? With our niche market, it's actually 40,000 different unions and groups. We don't feel the need to be out there chasing business in such a manner uh, and, and, and spending money on aggressive marketing campaigns. And, and, and Joe, I'm sure you already know this, but the companies that do spend money on that, they spend almost $2 billion a year. So that's why when you take the 10% of savings from advertising and the 15% of the dues, your permanent insurance that's available to you today is anywhere from 25 to 30% cheaper than any other company's rates. You get what's called a union negotiated rate. Does that make sense how they get that? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, guys, and the last reason is the ratings. And I don't need to bore you guys with the ratings. Um, but just understand that the way I'm going through these, and this is normal, normal, normal. Now this is high, 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 15%, another 10%. You have to do it. You have to do it. Nine out of 10 of you are going to leave this room and just not listen to me. And it's going to be your, it's going to be your time. That's, that's, that's wasted when you don't nail this. I promise you have to do it. Have to do it. You have to be charismatic. You have to become an actor. I'm not the same person in my sit that I am in real life. I'm not even really the same person right now in here yelling at you guys at the top of my lungs. I don't go around talking to people like this in the streets. <laughs> hey, Mace. Hey, Mace. How you doing, Mace? Oh, Mace. Great to see you, man. Great to see you. They're going to be like, this guy is on something, right? That's what you want <laughs> to What's up, Bob? What's up, Bob? <laughs> what up, dog? I'm sitting down with some people down in the city. What up, dog? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I got to get a couple of eyes in there sometimes. Yeah. Hey, hey. Let's I, go with you, I, bro. I, let's go with you, man. <laughs> nah, but, but for real, you got to show them that you, you know, you, you got street smarts and book smarts. Now, if you're someone that doesn't have street smarts, that might be a little bit fake and they might sniff you out, but, you know, it is what it is. Don't do it. Other than that, guys, ratings, that takes us and that completes the introduction. Okay. Anyone have any questions? 
I'm gonna go over like two more, two more quick tips. These freaking markers in this office. I'll be right back. Vince, what you need? A marker, bro? You need me to get you? <laughs> Okay, guys, I just wanted to take a poll real fast um, about which one you guys want to do. If you want to do a group me or if you want, okay, Andy wants group me. We can do group me, we can do group message, but I, I, I <laughs> uh, if we could do group me, I feel like that'd be, that'd be best. We can all get accustomed to it before we join the group. And then the people in the room, the ones who I haven't seen yet, Alex, and I think there's someone else there. If you guys want to put your numbers down on, like on the whiteboard or something, then I will totally add you. Hi, nice to finally see you. Yeah, I'll totally add you to the group me as well. Yeah, just maybe message it in like a, in the in the Zoom chat or on the whiteboard or something, and I'll make sure I get you added. Hey guys, if you want to put me in that group me, I could be like your cheat sheet if you need it. Because I'm already in the group me, I'm there. Like, I don't need to be in that, to be honest with you. I don't even between need to Between you be and here. Talia. Oh, between you and Talia, just, we're covered. Yeah, I just like watching Vince and getting on him. <laughs> he seems to like you too, don't worry. <laughs> I just got to keep him on his right. Okay, uh, Gina, help me. How do I put you in the group me? What do I click to be in part of the group? I know. <laughs> I so you're good. I'm going to create it. And then as long as you download group me, you should, you should automatically get added to it. So oh, yeah. it's it's have the app yeah. downloaded. Okay. So Thaya was like, add me. I was like, okay, but I don't even know how to add <laughs> No, sorry. I'll add you for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll, I'll go ahead and create that right now. Um, I'm going to add your numbers onto my phone and I'll get it done by the end of the meeting. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. All right. I want you guys to write down five keys to success in this biz. This is called Hugh Bell. Hugh Bell's five keys to success, actually. I don't even know who Hugh Bell is. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just joking. Can you guys hear me when I'm talking at the board? All right. So, let me make sure I get these spot on for you guys one of the ones do you guys remember what one of the ones was from earlier that i was talking about i said it before let yourself go remember so that's the first one write that down let yourself go okay You're in the people business. You're seeing people multiple times a day, every day. You gotta let yourself go. You wanna surround yourself. Second one is surround yourself with enthusiasts. And it finishes off by saying, be enthusiastic. Can you guys see that okay? Yes. Okay. That's why you spend $80 on a webcam. Please don't have a crappy webcam and start to draw on something and they can't see it because they're on an iPhone and they can barely hear you because you have a bad microphone. It's like, it's like going into a real sit in a real home and like whispering and like, you know, I don't even know, like can't make yourself look blurry in, in real life, but you know, it's, it's very important to have a high quality webcam and, and microphone. Third one. Be an actor, like I was just talking about. Be an actor. Four, be sincere. Five, speak with emphasis. Speak with emphasis, and who can guess what the last thing I would say? Emphasis and what? Passion. Close. Enthusiasm. Conviction. Speak with emphasis and conviction. Sales. Does anyone know what they say about sales? What sales is? Geo's team, you all should have heard this already. Sales is a transfer of belief from one person to another. So I'm convicted. I'm speaking with emphasis. I'm enthusiastic. 
about my product, my company, what it does. Pretty sure in one of Grant Cardone's chapters and Sell to Be Sold, he raffles off like a list of four questions that he says, if you can't answer right away with conviction, then you ain't gonna make it. You're not gonna close anybody. One of them was like, why with his country accent he has or whatever accent he's got going on, why should it be your company? Why your company as opposed to any other company in the entire country that's doing the same thing? Why? If you can't answer that right away, you're not gonna, you're gonna be missing sales. I think one of the second ones he asked was like, why not only is it your company that's the best to do it, but why are you the best person to deliver it? Why you over anybody else? Why are you the best to do the job? The third one is your product. Why is your product better than any other product, even if it's the same product down the street that may have a better rate or cost less? Why yours? Why? Because we make it sound good. We make it. There you go. Because we got the three to five day payout guaranteed freedom of choice certificate. That's huge. You start sitting down with a lot of people, you'll come across a couple of death claims where Prudential made them wait for three weeks while their wife couldn't get anything but cremated because there was no money there right away. Had to cremate her, couldn't embalm her, couldn't put her in the fridge. That cost money. Got to get your heart behind this stuff because this is real stuff. I'm not just, like I said, it's ain't about the money. The more that you convince yourself that you're going in there to sit down with your family and you treat them like they're your brother or sister or mother, watch what starts to happen in these homes. This is too easy. This is set up so simple. Most simple it can be in the entire insurance industry. Other insurance companies would kill for free leads that were highly qualified and, and only had one company saying that they were gonna do it with a president letter right next to it from their president. That is insane. You wanna go somewhere else, you see cold calling. If you wanna look somewhere else, I mean cold calling, prospecting, your training pay wouldn't be riding out and seeing 40 people in a week. It'd be riding out with your manager while he calls your mom and dad and tries to get him to buy something and that's your training pay. Like I said, be union, by union. We're 100% union. We're the only 100% unionized insurance group in America. You guys know you get health and life insurance benefits here, right? If you do eight, if you do 21,000 ALP in a single quarter, you qualify for an extra 300 bucks a month in commission out of nowhere, not out of your sales. You qualify for an extra three hundred dollars in commission towards a health insurance plan of your choice. Brought to you in part by the OPEIU Local Two Seventy Seven. If you're a family, they give you somewhere crazy, like upwards of five hundred a month for it. You also, at the same time you qualify for that, you get a twenty-five thousand dollar group term life insurance policy as well. When you're here after five years, both of those numbers go up. They give you like 50 grand in a life insurance policy. I think they actually give you a little bit less commission towards your health insurance because you're making that much more at this point. You start to get renewals. It's like a base salary, you know? Now you're making 20, 30, 40 grand a year, 50 grand a year in renewals. And then the biggest thing that's a union negotiated benefit that we have here is the lifetime renewals, 10 year, 10% vested renewal contract. That is not a thing in other insurance groups, it's not. If you look in your contract, it is right there. It's a union negotiated benefit. So understand through all the ups and downs that you guys are about to go through, these next two weeks are gonna test you in every way possible mentally. Understand you've got to be on your A game. You've got to get your sleep, even though you might get home late. Tell your girl, tell your boy that your new significant other is American income for the next 90 days. Because that's just what it takes, I promise you. You're going to eat, sleep, 
and guess, you know, you can, you can guess the third word, American income. But as you go through that, you're going to become the best version of yourself that you can be right away, as quick as you can. And to whom, I think I said this in the company uh, agency meeting, but to whom much is given, much is tested. When you're starting on this, this, this career path, and there's this much at stake, and you have this much success about to come into your life, if you execute this, and you give it your all for six months, three months, three weeks, understand that the devil's going to try to take you out. Promise. I don't know if you guys are spiritual. I'm barely, I'm just getting back into it. But there's, there's, there's a bad thing in this world. I don't, you can call it the devil. You can call it whatever you want. But it's going to come after you. Right when I started doing this, all kind of stuff started going wrong in my life. All kind of stuff. Basement flooding. Best friend dying. Age of 24, cirrhosis of the liver. Three months after him, other best friend died. I only had four. Like, you know, you got your core from like when you grew up, you got like those three or four people, like two of them just dead. And and, and I'm over here training with Geo, ready to like skip out. I'm going down to the hospital because that's how that's how like I was so committed to success. It wasn't even funny. And the list goes on and on. Brother's girlfriend, OD, she passed away. Went from seeing her little bubbly face and great personality, them trying to change for the better, doing great for months on end. All of a sudden, they both relapsed. Next thing you know, I'm looking at her with a tube in her mouth in the hospital, brain dead. Vegetable. I had three sits that day. Everything in my mind was like, go home. You deserve to rest. This is too much. This is a lot. But everything Simon and Tommy would teach me is like, this is, this is what's going to happen. Like, this is, this is the test. Like, this is happening not at you. This is not happening to you. This is happening for you. So what did I do? I used all that anger and all that emotion, and I went straight to the field, and I went three for three, even though my ass should have had more than three booked. No one told me no that day. So the way that you guys are so set on, 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 on making this work right now, the way that you guys are so passionate about changing your life, whatever reason you came here, whatever that was, it's going to be tested and adversity is going to keep trying to pull you further and further away from that reason. Just like drugs do to your mind. You won't even realize it, but it's going to happen. So understand that people that are serious about changing, they will do the things that it takes. They will do what others aren't prepared to do to get results and get a life that others don't have. So if you're not ready to give up, to go up, you probably should just stop now. If you're like me and you came here to get better and you're expecting the adversity and you're waiting for it and you've been through a lot in your life already prior, this is just another, this is just another phase. And, and I just, I would just keep taking him on the chin. Like you guys ever watch Happy Gilmore where he like goes and stands in front of the thing that like shoots the balls out of his face. He's like, oh, and it's just blasting him with these golf balls and it's, yeah, bring it on. I'm like, <laughs> I went home, my basement had like three feet of water in it. And I was just like, <laughs> you see this babe this is great it just life just keeps trying to take me out of america this is oh this is something else right but uh the way that you're going to get the, the mental toughness and stamina to deal with this is mind body and spirit you need to be pouring into yourself every day so that you can afford those shots you can't really expect to pour much out of your own cup to these clients when you got to go into each one of these sits, like top notch version of yourself, when you got to come in like 100% every day, ready to fix the things you messed up the day before. It's not easy. Like you're going to have to keep going, keep playing, keep giving that next presentation all you can as if it had a life and history of its own. 
which, which, which I mean is like, like it's your last time you could ever do it. So the only way to be that peak and that kind of performance is to pour into yourself so that you can afford to pour out. Thought I was already in a pretty well area in my mind when it came to development when I came here and it, I, I definitely, <laughs> I learned I was not real quick. The books, the knowledge, last four letters of knowledge is edge, gives you an edge, right? It's always researching. What happens when you die? Why does that happen when you die? What else can the state of Illinois do? Oh, they can tax your money that you give to your kids. They can tax your home that you get. Oh, okay. I was just indulged in it. Sell to be sold every day in the shower, right when I woke up. Wasn't Facebook anymore. Wasn't Xbox anymore. That's called wasting your time. Podcasts, books, that's called investing your time. So you can waste your time and not really change your life because you're not willing to change the things you're doing, or you can invest your time, change your ways, and you'll essentially change your life. I feel like I've been here for like eight years. You guys probably think I've been here for a lot longer than I've been here. Do you guys know how long I've been here for? Eight years. Who said eight years? <laughs> <laughs> been here my first day. I still have this recording. I was just showing Mason. My first presentation was a United States steel worker who was like 72 years old and still going to work so he can afford his wife's dementia medication and keep her happy until they die together. And as well as the insulin that the country was trying to essentially bend him over on. Poor dude, 70 something, still going to a steel mill. And I'm over here, just got fresh out of that life for exactly that reason. Couldn't have been more grateful. This other stuff, this adversity, these no sales, the emotions, doesn't come close to what, <laughs> what you're gonna go through anywhere else. But this will be the quickest, and this will be the most, this will probably be not the, I'm not gonna say the easiest, but when you look at this kind of growth and opportunities in America that can give you what this can, it's usually a business. And a business means you're about to go in debt for two, three years. And if you think no shows and emotions are hard, wait till you have an entire business and hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. That's hard. When your business is failing down in the middle of the street and everyone knows it's yours, think about that pressure and your family is relying on it or they're gonna be out on the street. You have no support from anybody, from anybody, none. Here you have an entire support system and an international company that are giving you the same growth that you can have at a real business. You don't gotta pay for the leads. You don't gotta pay for this TV. You don't gotta pay for that $600 frame that's on this TV. You don't gotta pay for the marketing, the resources, the office. You didn't have to buy nothing. So don't get it twisted because I'm telling you in your next 90 days, life's gonna try to get it twisted. That's why 5% of Americans make over 250, 7%, whatever that number is, because the other 93%, they ain't got it. They quit when it got tough. The only thing stopping this is you. Even if you have a manager that's not compatible with you or you may not think is the best, it doesn't matter. You can train a stud, a, a dud, a dud manager can train a stud and that stud's going to find a way to be a stud. You can have a stud manager train a dud and that dud's always going to be a dud. You know, so with that, with that being said, guys, I had, I had one more little ripper I was going to give you, but I got so much in my mind right now. It just, it just escaped me there. Oh, so I was just listening to one of my mentors on a Zoom call. It was going back to that whole, like, when, when you want to change your life, you do the things that you need to do. You learn the things that you need to learn. You go out of your way 
to find out what you got to do, right? So you'll notice through this training class, some of you guys will sit and wait for it. You'll wait for the handout. You'll wait to be spoon fed by your manager. You won't go out of your way to learn these things. You won't go out of your way to get better. You won't go out of your way to implement different systems and procedures in your life. And that's why your life's not going to change. I pretty much already touched on it. I thought that was a really good point. You talked about how like when you want to change stuff, you'll start to do the things that you need to do to get it changed. Like I became obsessed with figuring this stuff out. I was like a complete carbon copy of Geo's presentation in the house. And I had no script, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth till 2 a.m., getting home at 3. His ass had me coming back at 8. And he lived an hour away. Whatever it took. It was a lot better than getting destroyed all day on a job site, breaking my back and, and risking my health. Perspective is everything. So if you want to make it happen, if you want to change, if you came here to find something different in life, Get ready to start to do different things that you've never done before. Discipline. Discipline type things is what I'm referring to. Doing what you need to do regardless of how you feel, when it needs to get done, the way it needs to get completed. That's all I got for you guys today. If you need anything, you got my number in that chat. Hope you enjoyed it. A little passion at the end that did not have planned for you, so don't think this is me selling it. Wish you all the best of luck. I'll see you next Friday on this training class. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, so that's that's pretty much it for today. Okie dokie. Okay. So yeah, Jay Bond just messaged me. He's like, hey, let me know when you're done. Hey, Lindsay, <laughs> I'm about to send you the link. Uh, our meeting for three o'clock is in the waiting room, so we could just hop in there from here, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right, I'm about to send it to you right now. Okay, cool. All right, bye, Lindsay. Hey, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, don't hesitate on asking him. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. All right, have a good day. You too. Bye.